Welcome to this episode and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on this um, Mitsubishi Shogun. Uh, in other markets I know they call it a Pajero and uh, pretty much the problem with this vehicle is that it has got a problem with the diesel particle filter system, right? Um, the last time I did this vehicle, I, I think it was probably over a year ago and you know there are not so many in our country um, so it's been really a while and I didn't document um, so I then decided to document in this video. So the problem that it's having, that it is having, is a problem of the DPF. A, it's complaining that it is blocked. B, it's also complaining that it has tried to clear that block by doing regeneration, but uh, no success has been has been happening. So hence the vehicle has got excessive um, diesel consumption. I'll explain why it consumes a lot of diesel when it is in that in that um, state. So. What's happening with this car is that it's got a bunch of lights which are showing in the dashboard. So I'm going to switch it on so that you have a look. Um, so what is what is happening is that when you turn it on, right, um, you're going to see a check engine light which is lit on and also that uh, DPF light. It stays on for a moment and then it starts to flash. Um, and I can tell you that this car is in lip mode. It's not performing as it should. It's saying go and fix uh, this DPF issue. Otherwise, if you don't fix that DPF issue, I'm not going to perform. So it has gotten into its self-protection mode, so to say. Um, and that is that is the case that is happening on, on, on this vehicle. So uh, the owner contacted us. And um, before um, they try to do a regeneration where you just plug in a computer, you tell it to do that first regeneration where it is supposed to clear the blockade which is in the exhaust. But unfortunately, uh, it ran for hours uh, without any success. I think up to almost three hours, right? Um, but there was no success whatsoever. So the situation now is that um, they've come to us so that we implement a more permanent solution. And um, that's pretty much what we are going to do um and um, hopefully if you're having the same problem you you be you you become uh, equipped with the knowledge of what is uh available as a solution that you can do on your vehicle okay so to kick off here's what we've done we've we, we, we took uh the dpf apart um obviously the DPF is in bad state, right? And there's no way, no way it can be fixed. Uh, in as far as the actual DPF, which is on the vehicle, as you can see, it's badly blocked. And um, parts of parts of the DPF showed that probably they tried to put some water with some kind of chemicals, and um, <clears throat> it was really contaminated. It was at a point where it is now contaminated. No wonder they've been that regeneration had uh, completely failed. So you can see. I'll try to put it to the window so that you can try to see. You can see minimum light is passing through the. This, uh, diesel particle filter which is a problem and I, I believe that's exactly why um, the, the the engine management system of the vehicle was complaining about the DPF system right uh, so due to the contaminants which were stuck again it was trying to do um, the regeneration for a long time that's why, you, why you, we were seeing um, the error codes that you are looking at on the screen so you're looking at one error code which is telling you that the suit accumulation is too high and then you're looking at another one which is telling you that it has done regeneration for a long time and it's not uh, succeeding, right? It, it does its own passive regeneration as you're driving and then when they put it on a diagnostic machine and try to do a forced regeneration uh, using a, 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 a dealer tool, again, it didn't work uh, simply because the DPF already, you know, it's, it's, it's in a bad state um, and there's nothing really to recover from that. DPF system. So the solution that we are going to be implementing is uh, we're going to be converting um, this vehicle to non-DPF. But first of all, let me just start by explaining to you uh, what a DPF system is and how it works. Now, this is very important for you to understand this because at the end of the day, it's going to help you understand the solutions that are available to you. It's also going to help you um, understand uh, what you can then do in order to solve the problem that you're having with your vehicle, right? So sis, these DPF systems are implemented on these vehicles. This one is an import. It came all the way from, I think it should be Australia. Um, um, uh, usually in first world countries, they've got these vehicles which have got these uh, diesel particle filter systems, which is to limit the amount of emission that is getting into the atmosphere, right? Um, unfortunately, what then happens with these vehicles is at some point they are going to fail, particularly uh, here in third world countries, because we are a company in a third world country, in, to be specific, we're actually in Zimbabwe. Um, what's going to happen is um, just because we've got uh, horrible quality of fuel, right? 
there are going to be contaminants when the, that diesel burns it has good contaminants they're going to stick inside the dpf um and pretty much uh, everything starts to go down down you from there right so some of the reasons that cause a diesel particle filter to fail are three things right the first thing i've already hinted that it's uh, an issue of bad fuel right um that's number one for a prolonged period of time you get to a point where there's nothing to recover from the dpf either you have to buy brand new or you have to look at other solutions which are much more permanent so first i talked about um um quality of fuel another reason why these dpfs fail is because of um your driving habits to to to, to put it put it quite plainly right vehicles with diesel particle filters do not like uh people uh, we we'll use them only for a short short distance, right? So let's say you 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 live six kilometers away from your office and you only use you, your vehicle. You drive it a few minutes to go to office and back. You're not giving it enough time because the vehicle requires a lot of time to do its own passive um, regeneration, right? It it requires time to do its own self cleaning process, which we call um, uh, regeneration. So if if you drive a short distance, you're not giving it time. It needs a good let's say at least thirty or almost uh 40 minutes of driving right uninterrupted where you are driving maybe 40 kilometers or so on highway conditions that's what it likes so maybe i would recommend for somebody who uses this vehicle over a short distance like six kilometers to find a time during a week where they can actually do those long stretch uh drives so as to give it time to clear any suit that would have accumulated inside the dpf so that is uh, a second reason why um uh these dpfs fail your driving habits right so and then the third reason why they fail is maybe something starting is 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 failing air fuel ratios right when i say failing air fuel ratios i'm saying that uh maybe your turbo is no longer performing as it should right or maybe your injectors are malfunctioning or not performing as they should or you've got a problem with the egr valves so all those um components what they cause is they cause a situation where your vehicle is starting to produce black soot so when black soot is being produced by your vehicle all it does is it accumulates inside the dpf and remember what i said earlier that it has got its own self-cleaning mechanism right so imagine that your vehicle is producing uh black soot faster than it can actually clear that black soot by its own passive um regeneration um regeneration um self-cleaning process so that's those are pretty much the three reasons why your dpf fail right so now in order to solve um the problem with your dpf is going to depend upon a where you are the ter when, when i say where you are um, i'm saying uh, uh, are you in a first world country or you're in a third world country where you've got a bunch of um um solutions to your disposal that's a b i also it also depends uh, upon which of the which of the reasons one to three have caused uh, your DPF to fail. So let's say first of all, you have your your DPF has failed because of uh, let's say um, your driving habits. So pretty much what you need to do is you can pursue. A method called regeneration where you can simply go to your dealer they plug in their diagnostic tool they do force regeneration after that force regeneration um then you change your driving habits you, you your dpf should be fine from then on and you shouldn't have problems right so that's solution number one right solution number two is you'd have to buy a brand new dpf right um and solution one and two is definitely the solution that you have to go for if you are in those first world countries because we are saying that um, any other solution outside of those would be a modification and doing a modification on the exhaust of this vehicle it becomes pretty much illegal in your country i know that in from the i know in the united states it's pretty much illegal australia again it's pretty much illegal and also in europe it's pretty much illegal right then for people who are in countries like ours where pretty much we don't have much of the those laws that um inhibit us to do similar modifications or which inhibit us to uh, deal away with the diesel particle filter we can pursue a third option which is converting that vehicle to non-dpf and that's exactly what we are going to be doing on this vehicle where we are simply converting it to non-dpf and um forget about the, the the operation of that um diesel particle filter system so when we've implemented our solution our solution comes with benefits right um obviously having have converted to non dpf and we've done plenty of these uh similar vehicles which have got this system what's going to happen is that number one 
uh, you're going to see those check engine lights they are going to disappear uh, the the check engine light and also that dpf light which was flashing that is going to uh, turn off right um that's a b you're going to see an improvement in its um performance right simply because your turbo is from far much happier now it is now able to breathe better so you are going to see an improvement in terms of power that's a and then b you're also going to see an improvement in terms of its fuel consumption so remember what i mentioned earlier i said that um it has got a self-cleaning process which is called regeneration and it does that passively whilst you're driving and that process of regeneration is where it's trying to cook what is whatever is inside the exhaust and it does that by squirting or by by um squirting some diesel into the exhaust some other vehicles have got an after treatment injector which is focused onto the exhaust and all it does is squirt diesel into the exhaust so as to raise up the temperature so pretty much um when uh, because it's no longer doing that because it's no longer going through that process of regeneration uh, as you are driving it means because that process of regeneration uses fuel right so what it means is that you're going to see an improvement in terms of the fuel economy of your vehicle so that's number two then number three you're also going to see your engine is actually going to last long so as to say because there are no more restrictions on the exhaust those restrictions which cause um which have got a prob which cause problems with the engine which pro cause problems with the with egr valves and so forth and even problems with the turbo you're going to see that your turbo is going to last longer and in general your engine is going to last longer so that's pretty much our solution and our solution comes with a lifetime guarantee right so what i'm just going to do immediately is i'm going to take you to a video where we're testing the vehicle so that you pretty much see how the vehicle performs and how it feels um, and then you know that if you do have a problem with this vehicle all you just have to do is to contact us and we should be able to help you so now you can see that the check engine light is gone and the um, flashing flashing dpf light all those lights are gone right um now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be driving it over a, a, a distance of about 60 kilometers just to make sure everything is okay just to make sure um, those lights don't come back just to make sure the lip mode uh, doesn't come back now i'm i'm so impressed uh because i drove it before um when it had the check engine light on it didn't produce so much power uh, especially up to about 60 kilometers per hour it just started to feel sluggish but now now i can really feel the beast it is um, and i'm beginning to see why people in australia love these cars i think at about 3000 rpm they really gives it really gives a, 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 a punch and um you can feel that i don't know you know unfortunately the camera can never do justice as you're driving um but i I'm feeling myself being planted in the seat every time I put the foot down, right? Um, and I know earlier when I was talking to the customer and he was complaining that um, he uses this car to tow his boat um, and now he can't use it because it doesn't feel it powerful anymore. I'm pretty sure that after he collects the vehicle, he's really going to be um, happy with the way that the car feels, right? Um, so I'm going to drive a bit of more kilometers. Um, when uh, you know today is a Friday, they so there's so much traffic on the roads. I'm going to go where there's no not much traffic uh, and try to clock about 60 kilometers uh, before I phone the customer so that they come and collect the vehicle. But so far, so far so good, and um, I'm really enjoying this car. I'm really enjoying it. it feels amazing. Uh, it feels amazing to drive. So I just concluded my final uh, testing and um as you can see there is no check engine light right there is no check engine light and that dpf light uh is gone right um and as i was driving all the time that i was driving um i had all the maximum power of this vehicle and um as you can see right now it's idling and there is no smoke whatsoever there is no smoke whatsoever so this only tells me one thing this car is ready to go where it came from and i'm sure the owner is going to be very happy with how the car feels so if you are having similar problem with uh, mitsubishi um mitsubishi shogun or pajero whatever you want to call it um what you can do is you can let me just put this belt on 
So I was saying, if you are having a similar problem, diesel particle filter problem with these cars and um, it's losing power, all you just have to do is to contact the numbers that are on the screen um, and we should be able to help you. Now remember that all our solutions come, to, come with a lifetime guarantee. So this that problem that it had of the DPF is not going to happen again. Those lights which are associated with DPF, they're not going to come on the dashboard and it's not going to put it into limp mode. Again, in terms of fuel consumption, um, well, that is the president. You don't see that every day. Wow. Okay. So if um, it's, a, it's a lifetime solution with a lifetime guarantee, right? So pretty much that's, that's the solution that we offer here. Um, and um, thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions you can ask in the comments below um, but don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel